This video demonstrates the use of clip planes and levels in Visicon. Let's start by opening a model that we imported from uh, Revit. So here we're just kind of rotating, rotating the model. And um, what we can do is on the Home tab, there's a uh, level setting. So if we turn on the Enable Levels, essentially what the program defaults to is essentially um, you know, only vis uh, visualizing those objects that are associated to that level. So if we go up and down, you'll see as is common with many uh, Revit models, for example, you have walls that are, you know, that go from the, you know, from one higher level all the way down that are assigned to one particular level, but, you know, aren't really limited to an actual uh, vertical, um, let's say, uh, box within uh, within the structure. So if we go up and down, you can see sometimes it's it's not that easy to see exactly what's, um, you know, what's clearly at one horizontal level. So what we've done is we can kind of, we want to turn on this floors option and we have this enable clip planes. So this will automatically create a level clip plane as you go through. And if, um, and then once that's activated, you can then easily navigate up and down throughout the model and making it very easy to kind of investigate the model or review your model with somebody else during um, during a meeting. So this explains how the uh, enabled floors with the enable automatic enabling of clip planes works. So let's go back into full model view and uh, discuss how uh, clip planes that are user defined work. So if we zoom in here into this, um, let's say we have this core wall here that we want to isolate under visibility. Um, you can see here we have a clip planes um, kind of uh, section. What you can do is you select any of the planes. So I'm going to, let's say my first clip plane wants to be, uh, per, uh, let's say, parallel to this face of this um, wall right here. So I'm going to select it, right click, add clip plane. So that added the first clip plane. I can then activate the, uh, essentially the clip plane tail and just move it back and forth. And then I can add any number of clip planes. So I can come in here, for example, take this face, add another clip plane. And if needed, I could just turn around and, for example, select this face right here, add another clip plane. So this, as you can see, it's quite easy to be able to isolate any structure. And let's go complete this and even provide another clip plane on this side. So this has allowed me to completely isolate this shear wall core without turning off, you know, while still, uh, you know, having all of the components that are not walls still visible, right? Obviously, the easiest al alternative would have been to just go in and turn on and off different components. Once you have your clip planes defined, under the visibility tab, I can also turn on and off the actual physical clip plane um, handles. This is useful if you want to make a screenshot, for example, and document this, as well as this navigation um, kind of uh, cube or, or, or um, circle in the middle. I can turn that off as well. So this way, this allows me to fully um, essentially clean the model for uh, discussions and markup. So I'll go ahead and turn those on. So essentially, that just recenters itself. It's the center of rotation. Um, once that's there, I can also then selectively turn on and off each of my clip planes. So as you can see, I can have up to nine clip planes that are all uh, defined. And then obviously it only lets me turn on those that are selected. And at any point I can come in and just delete all the clip planes. So that was a quick review of how to use levels with the auto clip planes as well as user-defined clip planes.